Um, yeah, thanks for taking the time today, by the way, just to meet with me. Can you just start off by introducing yourself and telling everyone what you do? Sure thing. Uh, my name is Josh Parker. I work here in the Charlotte, North Carolina region for Prosthetic and Orthotic Institute. Uh, I am a certified prosthetist orthodist for the last um, eight years certified, and I've been in the business for almost 16 years as a technician prior to this. So I've had my hands in the technical aspect of traditional fabrications, uh, transitioning to digital design and central fabrication as my kind of go-to essentials now. Wow. Can you tell me what your experience has been in your journey of going digital so far? Certainly. I would say it was a rocky start in the beginning about four or five years ago. I was really wanting to get into scanning with the structure sensor, but it was in its infancy and hard to grasp when it came to having an employee ask the business owner to purchase some kind of strange device. Uh, but once we got through that barrier, scanning became a, a good opportunity for patient care. It was clean and easy and accessible. Um, but dig getting into the digital design came through 2021 and beyond for me. Uh, teaming up with people online uh, that are like-minded mm -hmm. uh, allowed for a few of us to collaborate and help me decide and figure out how to use those agnostic CAD softwares, the mesh mixers on Fusion 360s and and whatnot, uh, to help design those sockets and, and yeah. Other products. So, so why were you choosing to use agnostic CAD and free softwares and community-based learning as opposed to, uh, you know, O&P SaaS software or large like packages? Certainly. I mean, the cost of a service is, you know, always going to be a point of contention at a, at a business level. So asking a certain company to say how much are you going to charge, it's, you know, could be anywhere from $3,500 to $10,000 per year. I just mm -hmm. felt like that wasn't quite fair to the, to the clinic. And so trying to find ways where, just like in our traditional labs, I can open the oven, I can throw a piece of plastic in, I can melt the plastic in thermoform over a plaster statue. Any technician can learn how to do that free of having to do annual charges. So yeah. I figured there has to be a way to do that for free or very inexpensive per year based on what's available. Yeah, and that's so true. Like That was one of the reasons why I wanted to make that move is because I was looking over my shoulder into the field of OMP is like, what is going on in the software world over there? You guys are they're, they're charging way too much. They're not telling anyone that the tools exist elsewhere for a fraction of the price. And uh, you could compete if you wanted to with all of these tools for 10% of your, your yearly cost, which is sort of, again, why a Fusion 360, I think, is such a popular uh, sort of tool. How have you found, you know, so you, you took some of my courses. You've been using Fusion a bit here and there. So uh, how has the experience been for Fusion? Do you recommend it to someone who's looking for new software? Certainly. I think as I develop and kind of get used to the digital design, um, from the clinician aspect, I will say it's a harder barrier because it does take time and energy uh, away from clinical care. Uh, but that being said, as a digital technician, if you have a dedicated position that could say, do those things instead of thermoforming in a lab with an oven and materials, mm -hmm. have them at the computer doing your, your CAD work, I think will be invaluable. So Fusion 360, I think, with the learning curve involved, works very well and I think it's repeatable. Mesh Mixer is more organic and I like using it for things that I just want to get my hands dirty with as if a traditional plaster of Paris model. Uh, but if you really want to get to the nitty gritty, you know, find details, I think Fusion is where you find most of your success. Yeah, absolutely. It does have some shortfalls with organics, but you know, <clears throat> doing Frankenflows or mixing softwares is really where people become power users when they can find cheats and hacks around for those kinds of things. Um, how has you know the value that you can offer changed for your patients based on some of the digital sort of skills or the digital products you've been able to produce? Like, have you done anything with in it with it in particular that stands out? Sure thing. I would say prosthetically, it's allowed me to uh, evaluate the patient's first check socket much quicker. So traditionally, since we our facility uses central fabrication, it might take me up to a week to get my initial check socket. So in this manner, I can scan the patient Monday morning. I can have them fitted Tuesday morning uh, for their initial fittings. So for us, that seemed to be invaluable. Uh, a project that I did recently was I tried my first flexible inner liner along with a check socket. So I was able to wow. create air cushions at the distal anterior tibia and the fibula head, fabricate that in one printer, and fabricate the check socket in the other printer and allow for another fitting that could potentially save me on the cost of good from having the lab charge me for a flex flexible inner liner for the lamination and just save that cost and, and, and have a better accurate fit 
prior to delivery. Wow. Yeah, that's really impre- incredible. Um, how did you find the course material and how did it help uh, you figure some of this stuff out, if any? Sure. It's definitely using, um, you know, LinkedIn has been a great resource for a lot of information disseminating. Um, you know, having OMP Digital Design on YouTube and available through LinkedIn has been a great source to, to get into it because it's, thankfully, you've put it together very well and you're using it as a, a tool for people to use. I've also been talking with other other clinicians that are in the digital field, whether it be Derek Schmidt, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and those types and a little bit of uh, Joe Fairley, you know, over the past couple of months. So they've been great guys inside the digital space that are helping along with that, the, the mesh mixers and the Z brushes. You know, yeah. how do we, how do you create a socket? How do you modify certain things when you don't have availability to other softwares? Yeah, absolutely. You know, they've, I've definitely had Derek helped me immensely in the beginning, just with some consulting and you know pointing me in the right direction. And Joe has been yeah essentially neck and neck with me a bit, but he's uh, much more FDM based and you know, machine based, which I appreciate because that's not my wheelhouse. Unfortunately, I stick to my design programs and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, awesome. Well, yeah, what was the last, the last question? What would you tell others who are looking to learn digital design and design literacy, but aren't sure about the benefits? Like, what would you tell them about, you know, the program or how to start or where, where to look for starting their first one? Well, certainly. I mean, I definitely think this is where we're moving towards over time. We're, I think traditional fabrication will always exist. And it's just the nature of our business and we can we like getting our hands dirty. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think we're in an age where MJF printing is becoming accessible and the costs are coming down. If you can find a good uh, digital technician to be able to CAD the, the devices and either send them out to a local uh, MJF printer in your city or state, I think it's going to be invaluable. I think it's going to allow for the cost of goods to come down slowly because our central fabrication costs and our are going up and our insurance reimbursements are going down. So we're going to have to find ways to curb around some of those shortfalls. And I think printing eventually will be our, one of our ways of doing that. Yeah, no. And here's to that and the future for OMP and digital design. So uh, thank you for your time. And I'm sure everyone will find it really invaluable too, uh, watching this. So thank you. No, you're certainly welcome. Happy to do it. And thanks for all the help on your side too. Absolutely.